you're asked to code the children's game of Fizzbuzz. How this game plays out is two people take turns counting to a certain number. Whenever the number at hand is divisible by three, you say fizz. Whenever it's divisible by five, you say buzz. And whenever it's divisible by three and five, you say fizz buzz. So the game would play out something like this. One, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, fizz, 13, 14, and at 15, where the number is divisible by both three and five, you say fizz buzz. Hello world, and welcome to Algorithms with Ari. This is a very simple but interesting problem. It allows you to think about the problem, understand it, apply different kinds of logic to come up with all the different kinds of solutions and pick the optimal one and then translate that into code, which is pretty much 50% of being a software engineer. The other 50% is usually taken by emails and meetings. So we're done describing the problem. Now let's think out loud. The most important part of a coding interview by far well, so there's four different conditions over here in this problem. Let's just uh, quickly draw them out. There's the first condition where the number is divisible by three, where you're going to output fizz. And then there's the second condition, which is that the number is divisible by five, in which case you're going to be outputting buzz. And then if the number is divisible by both three and five, like the case of 15 over here, you are gonna output fizzbuzz. And last but certainly not the least, the fourth condition of the problem, if n does not satisfy any of these three conditions, you just output n. All right, now that we've thought out loud, let's go into whiteboarding this problem, the next step before getting into the code. But before that, I need you to pause the video right now and solve this either in your head or on a whiteboard or on an IDE. All right, let's get into it. Let's set the number uh, that we're gonna count up to as 100. And so we're gonna run a for loop probably from one to n. And if the number is divisible by three and five, let's go ahead and output fizzbuzz. If it's just the uh, just the three, then go ahead and output fizz. If it's just the five, go ahead and output buzz. And if it's none of those, um, we're just gonna go ahead and print i. Now, a very important part over here is that we keep this condition before any others. The fizz bus, if the number is divisible by three and five, needs to go before any other condition. Otherwise, on a number like 15, you're gonna either output fizz or buzz, depending on which condition three or five you put on top. Let's jump into the code here. We're pretty much done whiteboarding the solution out. All right, let's do this. I have fed the number 100 to the method fizzbuzz and let's go. For i in range um, target, uh, actually one to target, uh, since we're gonna skip zero over here, um, if i mod three equals to zero and i mod five is equal to zero, please print is buzz and um, so if I mod 5 is equal to 0 we're gonna go ahead and print buzz um, and the last condition the well the second last condition is if I is divisible by 3 we're gonna go ahead and print fizz and then the last condition is going to be if i basically is not neither divisible by 5 nor 3, we're just going to go ahead and print i. And let's go ahead and run this program. And let's go ahead and run this program now. And there we have it. We have a 1 to 100 count of fizz buzz. As we can see, number 3 is fizz, number 5 is buzz, and number 15 is fizzbuzz. 
Now, again, the most important condition over here is to put this one on top. When i is divisible by both three and five, you want that condition to be the first because if you put this condition after the individual three or the five, what's gonna happen is if the number is divisible by, let's say, three, this is gonna hit, the code's gonna hit this condition first, and you're gonna actually output fizz and not fizzbuzz. So that's why the condition of i is divisible by three and five goes first. Now that you're done, the next important step in terms of a code interview is to see if there is a better solution or a cleaner solution. And in this case, there is. So let's step into the territory of further impressing your interviewer and make the solution cleaner. Watch this. So I'm gonna go for the same for loop, but this time I'm gonna set variables. I'm gonna set fizz equals to fizz if and only if i mod three is equal to zero. Else, I'm gonna set the variable fizz as an empty string. I'm gonna do the same with buzz. Buzz is gonna be equal to buzz if the number i is divisible by five. Else, buzz is, is just gonna be zero. So now what do we have here? If i is a multiple of three, the variable fizz is gonna be fizz and buzz is gonna be empty. And if i is a multiple of five, buzz is gonna be the string buzz and fizz is going to be an empty string. So what do we do here? We say if fizz or buzz, if one of these is true, go ahead and print uh, we're gonna use an F string here. Go ahead and print fizz and then buzz. Else, print i. And voila, what a beauty this is. Let's go ahead and run it. Look at that. Number three is fizz, number five is buzz, and number 15 is fizz buzz. This is clean, ladies and gentlemen, and the cleanest part of this code is this print statement right here. It's gonna go ahead and either print fizz, buzz, or both fizz buzz, taking advantage of the F string and an empty string that's not going to be output. Now, I would stop here, but if you wanted to go on and step into the territory of just freaking your interviewer out, you could go ahead and write a one-liner Pythonic solution here, which basically maps a lambda function to a range of one to 100, and prints all of this out with a one-liner solution, but I would not recommend this. This is way too much. Your interviewer is probably not gonna like this, this, this level of over-smartness. Now, here the conditionals and print statement work in conjunction to output the correct solution. Note this newer syntax of printing with the F string really allows us to capture both fizz and buzz together. Now the time complexity on this algorithm is pretty simple. It's gonna be O of N, N being the number that we're counting up to. We're always gonna have to count up to that number. And that is it, that wraps up FizzBuzz. Hope you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and comment below if you have an, a better solution to this or any other questions regarding the matter. Remember your ABCs always be coding and when you're not doing that, you can always come on over here and discuss algorithms with Ari.